for show. Now, last week, mm -hmm. we showed you the first part of Feng Shui consultant Joey Yap's unique excursion to Taiwan. Exactly. We learned how Yin House Feng Shui, a study of selecting a burial spot mm. based on the elements, can affect one's lineage. And now, uh, Yap showed us several memorial halls of Taiwan's famous politicians, such as Chiang Kai-shek and Chiang Ching Kuo. Mm -hmm. You're very good with Chinese names. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Today, he's going to take us to various places of worship to study how land formations can contribute to the well-being of a sanctuary. Interesting stuff. Take a look at this. In Feng Shui, Yin houses represent tombs and burial places. At the risk of being morbid in nature, it is believed to be important to study the landform formations of our ancestral Yin houses, as it may affect the future generations. Recently, Zhou Yap, renowned Feng Shui consultant, had an excursion trip to Taiwan. The trip brought along 40 of his students from around the world to study the effects of the land formations of barrel places of politicians and famous figures towards their descendants. Last week, we brought you to the memorial halls of Taiwan's first president, Chiang Kai-shek, and the president's son, who was also the former president of Taiwan, Chiang ching kuo We learned how the placement of mountains and land formations surrounding the barrel place could affect the later generations. This time, we will be showing you three places of worship and study how the surrounding natural formations can contribute to the well-being of the sanctuary. The first destination of our two days excursion trip was the Tianyuan Palace. It is a common belief among locals that those who meditate at the temple would experience divine intervention. Upon investigation and reaching the higher floors of the pagoda, we saw the temple's massive compound with a special formation. This is known as a majestic looking double arrow Tanlang mountain with multiple layers of embrace. Tanyuan Temple is one of the uh, primary locations for Taoism education. A lot of people go there um, to study Taoism and to cultivate the Tao. So they go there and practice, they meditate. Now, uh, it is a very unique place found by some of the um, um, Feng Shui experts in the past. Um, they want places that can facilitate their training in uh, spiritual enlightenment. So normally, uh, to do that, not just tapping to a direction is sufficient. They need to find a location with such energy, where such energy exists. So to do that, they found the, uh, this star called the Tan Lang Star. Now, of the uh, 81 types of star, the double-headed Tan Lang Star is one of the most spiritual forms. Um, in ancient China, in, um, um, the, you know, there's a, a deity called Wang Dai Xin. He be achieved, he's known to achieve his immortality also from the same type of features in this place called Gap Wa in China. So in Taipei here, we have found that there's also a similar formation, the double-headed Tan Lang Mountain at the, where this uh, Tanyuan um, temple is located. And uh, that is the main feature. And the same mountain itself extends its own left and right green dragon and white tiger. Now, when we mention green dragon and white tiger, we are not referring to the figurines inside the house. We are referring to the left and the right of the mountain. And these are all natural formations that is produced by the mountain forms, the land itself, embracing that area. Now, the, the function of the dragon and tiger embrace is to circulate the chi within the, the compound. That's where the temple is located. After the Tanyuan Palace, the entourage headed to Guantu Palace. This temple is known as the oldest Mazu temple in northern Taiwan, worshipping Mazu, the goddess of the sea, as its main deity. 
many people make a pilgrimage to this temple on a daily basis. Normally, in the old days, Feng Shui is always used either A to locate um, good graveyards and tombs, or B to build palaces, or C to find good locations for spiritual development. And even in spiritual development, there are various types. One type is for education, and the other type is to facilitate commercial development, where people can make a living. Now, this particular temple we're looking at is located at the junction of uh, three water sources. Now, whenever we look at junctions of water, we call it a water mount, usually that area facilitates commercial development. Major cities like Tokyo, like New York, and all that where financial districts are, it's usually located where junctions of water converge. And this temple seems to be located at that junction. Now, normally when we talk about Feng Shui, we always like green dragon, white tiger, black tortoise, red phoenix, meaning the four surrounding hills that protect that area. Now, it happens that this particular uh, uh, temple doesn't have that feature. Why is it so? Why is it still prosperous? It is because the location of that temple itself is tapping towards the, di the opposite direction of the flow of the water. When it's located opposite the flow, means that you are receiving the water directly. Now, the function of a green dragon and white tiger normally in normal conditions is when you're looking out to the water, the white tiger and green dragon helps circulate the chi back into the property. And that's why you need a, uh, a land embrace, we call it the green dragon and white tiger. Where the property is situated reverse of that formation, you're already looking at the incoming water. So you do not need to have a, a land embrace such as the green dragon and white tiger. So this is the feature of this specific temple and it's strategically located to receive two of the three sources of water and that's why this is one of the most popular temples and are commercially successful. Catch more about this interesting excursion trip with Joey Yap next week. To find out more about Joey Yap Mastery Academy, viewers can visit www.masteryacademy.com and www.joeyup.com.